Um, but have you ever heard the term that your genes load the gun, your environment pulls the trigger? I feel like this really couldn't be more true when we talk about um, diabetes. So we are going to cover a lot about it today, but we're not going to get into the super, super deep science of it. But we want you guys to understand how much of a lifestyle disease is. The way that we live our lives really can contribute, turn on, make this disease happen. So I think we'll probably talk quite a bit about disease process, but we're not going to talk pharmacotherapy. There you go. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I think it relates to a lot of people, right? I mean, there's a lot of people that suffer from this disease, you know, or the consequences of the disease long term. But yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot, I'm... a lot of people. Um, and if there's, and look, I mean, at least half, at least half the population in the states has prediabetes type two or type one. That's a lot right, of people, right? And trending higher. Sure. And I mean, I swear, if I had, um, if I had a dollar for each email I get with a question of what, what to take, what to do for type two diabetes, guys, I'd be a billionaire. It's a lot. These questions come in every single day. So I just wanted to have a fresh new discussion yeah, about exactly. it and really like motivate you guys to um, either A, if you are diabetic or pre-diabetic, things that you can do to um, you know work on reversing this. Or if you're on the other side and you're not there, the you know the chances of getting there can be pretty high. Even so for people you... like you and I, we watch our sugars yeah. closely. We watch our A1C, our three month average closely. We get our insulin tested. Yeah. Like we're we're very much cognizant and aware that we could potentially trend into pre diabetes pre diabetes range. Right, right. You have to be aware of it all. Got to be aware of it all. Everybody, this is for every single one of all you. Of us. So if you're sitting there thinking I'm fine, I don't have diabetes. Stay tuned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if you're one of those skinny people or you fall into that skinny fat category where the sarcopenia, uh, sarcopenia, you also are at high risk for, for prediabetes and diabetes. Right. Yes. So it's not, it's not just, just an outward appearance of the phenotype of being skinny. Correct. 100%. So we'll talk about some of the causes, uh, best diet or ways to eat, exercise, movement. Um, yeah. Really, like disease is secondary to type 2 diabetes, which is kind of scary thinking about it all. And then, you know, we'll circle back and hit home on some of our supplements sure. that can help you guys in the process. And um, we try not to offend anybody along the way because, quite frankly, this can get really kind of heated into a lifestyle component. Like, why are you not doing more for yourself? Why are you not working harder at this kind of thing? Sure. And sure. We'll pro <laughs> we promise we'll pump the brakes on that. But we are very passionate about lifestyle. We are very passionate about disease prevention. Yes. And so sometimes it comes across that way. And I just want you guys to know we have your best interest in mind. Very true. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Um, so just a little bit of, you know, statistics. I mean, obviously, it's a chronic disease. Type 2 diabetes is a chronic. And we're sticking with type 2. Type 2 diabetes is a And pre-diabetes, yeah. And pre-diabetes, yeah. yes. Um, it's a chronic disease. 537 million adults ages 20 to 79 in worldwide have type 2 diabetes. This is from 2021. And it's projected to increase to 643 million worldwide by 2030. These are very scary numbers. And also just knowing like we are so educated on this, but yet the numbers just, the projection just continues to go up and up. So, um, and really when it comes to Americans, it's about one in 10. One in 10 Americans is this is not even pre-diabetic. This is type 2 diabetic. Yeah, that's 10. not actually at all that accurate, I don't yeah. think. I don't know. It's, no, a 30, it's, it's a that. 38 million Americans, which is about 1 in 10. I don't know. Adults. Yeah. And, you know, again, we're just saying adults too, but what's also happening yeah, more? Childhood, yeah. Sure. Childhood type 2 diabetes. Um, and, and that is very sad. Very, very, very sad um, because there's so much that can so much that can be done. <laughs> That's what we're really going to talk about. Um, so type 2 diabetes, you know, Ryan's going to do a nice paint a picture for us. But really, it occurs when the body doesn't produce enough insulin, or the cells mm. don't react, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, become, the body continues to produce a lot of insulin with insulin resistance. become resistant. Right, right, right. And then over a long standing period of time with type 2 diabetes, your insulin level, de the secretion of insulin will decrease, you're right, over time. But in the beginning, it, it amps it up. It, right, it right, pushes right. more. Because right, your body's right, resistant right. to it. It's not right. yet responding to it. So it's, it's wondering why. So yeah, keep Yeah, it's feet, like, why is this blood sugar still so out. high? Why, is, why are you not using mm -hmm. the sugar for energy and growth? Right. Because so um, insulin insulin's a hormone. And what it's designed to do is help the body, help the cells absorb the glucose to use them for energy. Sure. Right? So um, when your body's resistant to that, clearly that's not happening. We're not using that sugar for energy. And what is it doing when we're not using it for energy? Storing so, as fat. Yeah. Yep. Many, many times because mm -hmm. of this fat storage. Yeah. So let's just 
paint the picture. Yeah, it's of like course. What I want to do yeah, so. and I think it's a good good practice to run through this real quick. So the problem with reactive sick care and the whole Western medical model, and really most of the world now, is that you know there's no interruption of in the continuum of care. There's no continuum of care really. I mean, like if you're pre-diabetic, well, that's even before that, right? If you had the high end of normal, what we talked about is optimal levels a lot, you know, right. blood levels. Yeah. Most physicians aren't even really kind of talking to you about your high end of normal blood sugar. They're just not. There's nothing they can do about it. Your primary care is pretty much going to be like whatever. Not even it's not even like a, a flag yet. So like the high 90s, call it your fasting blood sugar. Right. Then like in your low 100s, 110, 123, 120 in that range, you're pre-diabetic. Maybe the doc says something at that point. Maybe, maybe not. Probably not because there's not a diagnosis code. There's not really a way for them to. To, to offer you any care. Now you bump up to 126 and you go higher, all of a sudden you're diabetic, you get a prescription, you get follow-ups, you get all these different things, educational materials through how to manage your diabetes with your medication, so on and so forth. Right, and you're just talking about blood sugar. You That's strictly blood, on fasting blood sugar, A1C. but there's also other metrics that we would encourage you to know, like know your A1C, that's mm -hmm. your, that's your, what, that's your three-month average of your blood sugar. You should know that. It should be under 5.7. You know, that's an awesome indicator. You should know what your fasting insulin, your insulin levels look like. Um, and then for those of you that are on that threshold of being concerned and have some concern, an oral glucose tolerance test, as bad as it sucks, because you have to, I forget, like that big sugary drink you drink and then right. monster so your sugar. Right, so for those of you that, but females that have had babies, like we typically They have sometimes to, have it during yeah, pregnancy. You, you have sure to do pre, Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, so the OGTT, the oral glucose tolerance test, is a really high predictability on like where you stand as far as your, your insulin response and diabetes. So that's helpful information for those, those of you out there. But if you don't even know your fasting sugar, you can literally go get a glucometer from the grocery store and test your sugar at home no, fasting and, and postprandial after food. And you can search online for the normal levels. But like you got to know your numbers. You have to absolutely know what your fasting is, your postprandial. Like you should know your A1C. And if you don't, it's time for blood work because you're past due. Like that's just right. much needed. And it's normal to see the A1C. That's not foreign for a physician to look at that. Right. And also, again, how we always talk about, you know, taking your health care you know, into your own hands. Look at your trends. So oh, when yeah. you get Good your point. blood work back, yep. you know, get the, if it do, if it doesn't have side by side of like your past, you know, your previous two blood tests, ask for them. Look at your numbers and see, right. wow, what, the, mm -hmm. you know. Six months ago, I was this number, and then three months ago, I was that. And, ooh, you know, look at me. I'm going up. Yeah. If that's the case, guys, you, you really need to have a – this is a wake-up call. It, it's a warning sign. This it, is yeah, a big warning. There are, and there are signs, right? If those numbers are going up, you, pro you have a strong correlation to watching your waistline grow too. Right. And watching your activities decrease. Watching your libido plummet. Watching your energy, your free energy plummet. Watching your sleep quality go down. Like so, you, you have all these different things that are happening, and it should actually absolutely come as no surprise that you're probably getting pre-diabetic, type two diabetic. Right. Because those are the things that sort of start to happen from a metabolic perspective as your pre-diabetes progresses into type two diabetes. Right. So. So the quick picture. That's not normal aging, guys. Right. That's yes. not normal aging. Good point. The quick picture is, I said we eat a piece of food, yeah. right? And so the body secretes insulin to take that glucose up to utilize it, right? Yeah. And if you're insulin resistant, the body puts that insulin out, but your body's resistant to it. So therefore it's not using it. And then it puts out more and it keeps putting out more. Blood sugar's high, not, nothing, nothing is happening. We're not utilizing that blood sugar for energy. Now, in a in a healthier in a healthy body that is not resistant, the insulin gets put out after we eat, and it takes up that blood sugar, gets it out of our bloodstream, right? You, and we use it for energy. So it's it's it really can be as simple as that. Um, so we need to make sure we take precautions and we do things if we're not if we're insulin resistant. One of the biggest ones you want to start with diet. Kind of feel like I mean to I me mean, like diet and exercise they're both like so yeah. e equally important, but let's just talk about diet. And now I'm not going to give you um, real diet advice on how to specifically eat if you're a diabetic, but um, there's so many things that there are so many leading physicians out there right now that are saying like, avoid the carbohydrates. And so we have proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Eat low carbohydrate, but Carbohydrates are not essential. Essential means that um, that we need them for survival, or our body doesn't make them. But we make glucose, right? So we we do make so then our carbohydrates are not essential. 
And if you are pre-diabetic, diabetic, if you have problems, if you're insulin resistant, what's the point of putting carbohydrates in if your body's not able to utilize it properly? And by carbohydrates, guys, I'm, I'm, this is, we hear a lot about sugar. Carbohydrates are sugars. Yes. Um, breads, pastas, grains, um, oatmeal. And I know some things like that, like oatmeal, it, it, it's a soluble fiber. It, it does have a lot of benefits, but um, I mean, each, each body is unique. And this is why we like the continuous glucose monitors. Um, if, you, if you don't know of that, you can look it up too. You can get one from your doctor, but it's one that's that, not entry level though. That's for just, I mean, to common knowledge, sure. common knowledge, sure, sure, yeah, sure. to know how things, I mean, there's many healthy people walking around wearing them to have the awareness of how their body reacts to certain foods. Um, so think about proteins and fats. Think about high quality proteins and high quality fats, right? Your, your lean meats, your, your healthy, um, low mercury fish, um, uh, eggs, dairy, just beans, uh, beans are a carbohydrate, but they're a great soluble fiber. So they really, really actually are, are beneficial. So just think about avoiding the sugars. And I know fruit, your fruit is extremely healthy, but because it's, it is sugar, it is sugar. So you have, when you, when you're here, I want you to think about more, um, on the low glycemic index. So glycemic index is certain food when you're low on the glycemic index, there are certain foods that, um, take longer to inc increase blood sugar. So you want to, Focus on those. I mean, berries are lower. Um, I think it's a fair thing for people to reference the glycemic index. Yeah, they want to see how fast it causes your blood sugar to spike. Right. How fast? With the, basically, the release, how the time release of the food to causing a blood sugar spike. Right. So just kind it's of a good guide. Can, it's a good can, guide because you're right. right. Like the fruits and the sugars and things like that. Like some fruits are very high in sugar. Right. Some are lower. And it's hard because you got to know fruits these are things. Healthy. Yep. But yeah, yet, if you're you having insulin resistance, they're not healthy for you. Right. right. Yes, they're full of nutrients, but it's not good for you if your body's not utilizing that, that sugar. So really, 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 really focus on the high quality protein, high quality fats, high quality fats, like your, your olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, your avocados, your nuts, your seeds, your olives, your coconut, all that kind of stuff in there. I mean, really beneficial. And it also really helps stabilize your blood sugar. And if you are eating carbohydrates, um, if you if you don't want to rule them out 100%, make sure you're pairing them with a fat or a protein. Because typically when we just eat carbohydrates, we have a big spike in our blood sugar. And we want, every time we eat, our blood sugar is changing, right? It's going to go up with food. But we want to keep it these nice, low rolling hills, not these big peaks and valleys. So if you're pairing your carbohydrate um, example, if say you're going to have a piece of toast, let's put some avocado on there, right? Let's have an avocado toast. If you're going to have an a piece of fruit, say you're going to eat an apple, which is also good soluble fiber if you keep that skin on there, but pair it with some nuts, maybe some nut butter. So just those little combinations will help balance your, your blood sugar better. And I mean, I know some people that do use the continuous glucose monitors, they notice things like changes if they eat, say they were to eat ice cream because ice cream has like a full fat ice cream has fat in it. It helps keep your blood sugar more stable than maybe say eating white rice you know, it just bumps it up. So the pairing of it can really help. But again, really think about the avoidance of carbohydrates until you get things under control. Yeah, you're giving like really like quality health advice, like from a dietary perspective and nutritionist perspective. Whereas really for most of the people watching that are concerned about this, stop the, eat the stop the like the sugar bolus, mm -hmm. right? Stop having this like crappy uh, coffee loaded with some sugar bolus in there because it's a cream, it's a sugar, it's a this, it's a that. Stop waking up first thing, eating a cereal or some heavy carbohydrate right. loaded with fruit and some flavored yogurt that's packed with sugar. Stop sugary beverages throughout the day. What's the deal with all these? I'm, oh, I'm hydrating well. I'm drinking my Gatorade or Powerade or whatever, whatever, or even drinking sodas, you know, loaded with sugar. Right. Dude, like, or putting like, I hate even saying this, but like putting some honey in tea. I mean, honey has great health benefits, health benefits but not profound. If, you're, if you're not able to utilize it properly, uh, right. not if your blood sugar is out of control, not if you're insulin mm -hmm. resistant. So you you have to look at things through a very different lens. You kind of do. And if you can you think do. about just taking it all out, take it all out. And if you are addicted to sugar, guys, I promise you, if you can do a complete zero carbohydrate, zero sugars for two weeks, you will get rid of that sugar addiction. Two weeks, I know, will be probably the hardest two weeks of your life. Yeah, sugar detox is but, a whole other thing. We should talk about that sometime too. Right. You know what I mean? Because 
but it helps so many. It really does. It's a real thing. What do you say about carrots? Do you have any opinion on carrots? In moderation. I yeah. mean, carrots are higher, uh, a vegetable that has to be fiber. higher in sugar, but it also has the fiber. You know, things like also like beets. Beets are, are so great for us, but they're higher in sugar. You know, so it's just yeah. moderation. But yeah. the, the, the fiber um, in, in carbohydrates really helps. So some other um, fiber foods I have on here, I was writing them down just so I don't forget. Black beans, lima beans, artichoke, apple with the skin, you need the skin, green peas. If you're gonna do some oatmeal, if you're doing some carbohydrates, that oatmeal does have the soluble fiber. Raw broccoli, sunflower seeds, walnuts. So all of these can be in incorporated because um, fiber helps control blood sugar. So you know, if you're, if you're going to go for those carbohydrates, I would say, that apple with the skin or some oatmeal, but maybe with right. your oatmeal, like sprinkling some sunflower seeds and walnuts, right? There's like a extra soluble fiber. So, think, and then timing of nutrition is super important. You know, we talked about fasting and intermittent fasting and time feeding windows and those types of things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think like the really important thing to take away, and this requires a lot of discipline. I understand this is not an easy thing for people that are so accustomed to it because you're, you're the addiction center, the dopamine reward center is so fired up on some of these food choices that you just can't very hard to avoid them. It's better for you just not to buy them. Mm -hmm. But when you eat, it's like eat for a meal and maybe not snack as much, right? Like kind of minimize the snacking in between to let your blood sugar stabilize and normalize. But if you continue or you're or prompting the, the pancreas to release insulin just during your feeding window, like almost the whole time, that is not ideal right. for somebody that's pre-diabetic or diabetic. Right. So, very good take, point. Take that into consideration as well. So timing of your right. food. Right, timing of your food. Focus on those three meals and just make them hearty and healthy. Um, you know, good enough calories that you can have your three meals of the day and that be it. You know, you should be able to go four hours after eating a meal without feeling what hungry. What is the deal with this dude? Hey, what is your deal, David? What I, I mean, I, every every week, same thing. Day, Walmart yeah. has better products than Live Good. Very funny, dude. Send me your products, David. I don't understand though. It's like you want attention, you, you just got healthier. it. There you go, man. Okay, um, exercise. Let's bump up to exercise. Um, so, did you know that exercise, exercising, utilizing your muscles, can help control blood sugar, similar to that of I diabetic did. medications? I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I, th I was reading that earlier yeah. and I was just like, I mean, that's, it's blown, yeah, that's blow away. not enough right there to tell you why you need to exercise. So sure. what exercise does to your blood sugar is the same, is very similar, comparable to what diabetes medications do. Exercise is so extremely, extremely crucial. And the center of disease control only recommends 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week. Um, that's very little. But again, start there. Start if, there, if that's, sure. If you're not exercising, I mean, 150 minutes of moderate intensity per week. Divide that up. A moderate intensity, right? Um, fast walking, a hill walking, biking. Um, we know we want the weight training in there. But right now, keeping this super, super simple in terms of exercise, it's part, it, the, what we want you to do is contract your muscles. And that contraction of the muscle is what pulls that blood sugar out of your blood. And utilizes it for energy. And the more muscle you have, the better able you are to continuously take up sugar from your blood. So it's just, I mean, you, you have to do it. I can't even say anymore. Like you, you have got to exercise. That is like, it's like, there's no, it's a non-negotiable. It's a 100% non-negotiable. I mean, this is for everybody too. Like um, we did our, our last week's training on it was, it was about metabolism, but this goes just with that because if you missed it, make sure you watch it. But one of the things that we were saying is that you need, you should be moving your body, not just that little bit of exercise you're doing, you're setting aside to do a day or per week, but you need to be moving your body continuously through the day. And we had recommended like every 30 minutes, set a timer, every 30 minutes to move for two minutes. Yeah. If you're doing this continuously throughout your day, your muscles are continuously contracting and they're pulling up that blood sugar from the bloodstream. That is going to help diabetics, pre-diabetics, uh, anybody that insulin resistant, this is going to help so much. So, so let me drive that home because I really think that's some of the best advice I've heard you ever say and I, because it applied to me. Like that's so real. Like you can exercise an hour a day, then sit most of the day, desk work, whatever it might be, 
and you're not moving. Whereas the, the people that are the healthiest, call them, or live the longest lives, there's longevity, uh, blue zone type deals, you know, they move a lot. I mean, they, they may not be in the gym lifting weights, but they're moving all day, every day. They're up and down hillsides or climbing stairs. So I was like, holy crap, that really applies to me. So yeah. every 30 minutes, try to get up, like what, air squats, whatever, push-ups. Whatever works in the walk, environment you're at. If you walk some if stairs. you're working from home and you can quickly walk outside and yeah. walk up and down the street real quick, yeah. get some fresh air too. So how long? Every 30 minutes? Like two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes every 30. And it doesn't have to be like, Huge say, say you're doing beneficial. air squats. It doesn't have to be like this high intensity, fast jumping air squat. You just contract, contracting your muscles. Just not being sedentary in that chair, standing yeah. up and going up Such and down. Such good advice. Really and is. this is stuff that everybody can do. And, and you know, so when, that's why I wanted to keep the exercise portion really light because I know it can be intimidating. It can be. Um, you know, for me, no, I love exercise, right? And we know that, like you do too. So what I could go on and on about exercise, but I know I'm speaking to many because I know there's so many of you out there that hate exercise. <laughs> <laughs> or they don't even know how to incorporate it in. They don't know where to begin. Yeah, sure, I get it. I sure, get it. So like, sure. again, that's why I wanted to bring up the CDC recommendation of like a minimum of 150 minutes. So yep. To me, I feel like that's very minimum. I feel like the CDC is being very, being very nice, yep. but a minimum of 150. And then just do those two minutes yep. every 30 minutes, guys. And, and then one last piece to use, eat before and after a meal, but definitely after a meal. After you eat, go walk. Oh, so you said eat before and after a meal. Did I say that? Yeah. I'm so sorry. I yeah, like, no, I mean, walk, move. Right. Before and after every meal. Yes. So, yes, right? I mean, but that's that's amazing advice. I, guys, that's to be the big takeaway from today for sure if you want to actually do something. And the 30 minutes of workout a day, that can be a modest, brisk walk. You know, that's the thing. We do encourage load bearing, of course, and things right. of that nature. But, yeah, and that's a separate – that's, like you said. And if you're sitting there saying, I don't have time, um, but maybe you watch a – 30 minute TV show. Right. Guys? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or get yourself a treadmill or the one of those little walking, the walking, um, they're not called walking treadmills, walking, yeah, walk, whatever it is. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. We have one yeah, you know, too. We like exactly. wheel it around and yeah, stick it up small, to a counter. Thing, yeah. Thing Stand and walk on that while you're watching your 30 minute show. It's just about moving your body. Awesome. What's um, up next? Okay. And, hey, just for you guys that wonder why I'm not looking at the camera all the time, there is a computer right here. So it's not that I'm distracted. I'm actually managing the comments and the questions that come through. So I see all you guys talking. You just can't see my computer. So I apologize if I'm not making eye contact with you uh, on the screen here. But that's what I'm looking at. So yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. You know. Yes. Uh, it's hard. We have to try to kind of see as we're going along if we can answer questions while we're doing this. Or and I like it. I think the engagement is super fun. There's good comments to pull yeah. up. Yeah. This is super fun. Um, okay. So root cause of all disease. So I. I personally feel like this type 2 diabetes is the cause of all disease. So many times when I get an email. That's a bold statement. I know. All, it's very bold. All, okay, I should all say disease. all, most, That's a lot. Let's just say a lot. I'm with you. Um, one of the biggest ones is fatty liver disease. And this is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, and the prevalence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is just going up and up. It's like skyrocketing. And every time I get an email about this, which is very often, I say, are you or whomever they're referring to type 2 diabetic? And 9.9 .9 times out of 10, it comes back yes. So I say, okay, let's take a step back. Let's go work on these, the, let's work on the diabetes because the other things will start to heal themselves in the process. Um, same thing when it goes to, uh, I have a question about like foot sores or leg pain, just a lot of it, I always ask the question, are you type 2 diabetic? And it comes back 9.9 .9 times out of 10, yes. So I don't ever want to focus on that issue. I know that was what the question was about, but let's focus on reversing the diabetes. Let's focus on improving our insulin resistance, improving our blood sugar. And it's a process. It's not an overnight fix, um, but it, it, you know, and you have to stay, you have to stay committed because yeah, it, it takes I, a lot. I'm with you. I followed all, along with everything you're saying. It's really a body composition issue because that's what contributes and causes the diabetes, right? Like the type two, the pre-diabetic and sure. the diabetes. It's right. Body composition, but you also talked about the sarcopenic obesity, which is your skinny fat. Have, and they might not know if you're not getting your body composition taken when you're at a doctor, you may not know just by looking at. So yeah. it, it, it is body. So when Ryan says body composition, right, it's, it's the portion of our body that's made up of, of um, fat and lean muscle, right? So just because you're skinny doesn't mean that body composition 
it is a healthy body composition. You could be skinny, and that's the skinny fat, where you have a high body fat and low muscle mass, but you just naturally have a skinny, a small frame. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, it, it is important to know your fat mass versus your fat-free mass. Right. You know, that's important stuff to know as well. Right. Because body composition, and we've talked about this in the past, but lean muscle does such a far superior job of fat tissue, of uptaking sugar, managing, uh, you know, imagine changes everything. Honestly, dietary is important, but then also environmental. So there's a lot of environmental in, uh, in, in insults that we experience that also impact um, our metabolic health. Right. You know, and when you start talking about diabetes, again, kind of the function, the core of that is metabolic dysfunction. So, yeah, yeah a lot of variables. It can be overwhelming, but we're right to be sitting here to talk about things that are pretty much the lowest hanging and highest impact, right? So, right. which are, you know, obviously food advice, nutrition advice, uh, exercise, and then just general education around it. Because here's what happens, right? If you don't, if you don't listen, you don't do anything. You're talking about the leading cause of blindness. You're talking about the leading cause of uh, renal impairment, so kidney disease. Um, That's and another dialysis. big one that I get the question yeah, the on all the problems. time. I'm like, if you have kidney so, problems, you know, diabetes is number one. And number number and number three on the microvascular side is um, is amputations. So you get right. the ulcers because you can't really feel because there's such distal periphery in the microvascular. There's a small blood vessel. So those three things. So therefore, the leading cause of amputations. You know, that's microvascular. The macrovascular side of diabetes is stroke and heart attack. Right. So. You're talking about major stuff. Right. And then now as soon as you get into heart attack, now you're talking right, right off the bat, boom, heart disease. You know, and then typically right. along with this, you have heart heart hypertension. You know, so high blood pressure. You know, and the, the heart attack thing is really a CAD, coronary artery disease issue. So guys, this thing is like it, it just it's such a it's such a, a, a volcanic eruption of you know, into this chronic disease world because as soon as all that happens, and we're not going to get into this so much, but the inflammatory cascade, the process of inflammation. Sure. So not only are you getting spikes of high inflammation and your cortisol response is all screwed up and your hypothalamus and your pituitary and the whole adrenal glands are screwed, then you have this chronic low-grade inflammation your body doesn't even know what to do about, so it compromises the immune function. Now you're worried about cancer proliferation. Right. Now you're in this like, okay, you started with obesity or whatever. Then you've got then you got diabetes. Then you went into this hypertension with coronary artery disease, heart attack, stroke risk. Now you have risk of cancer. What are we missing? Right. Oh, neurodegenerative diseases. Now you're talking about your Alzheimer's and your Parkinson's. Sure. Because again, the inflammatory cascade. And it's was literally it referred to as type, type three, three diabetes. Type three diabetes. Yeah. Because there's such a strong Causation, yeah, it, correlation and causal, causative, whatever. Yeah. It, it, it just, it makes you so sad, especially when you have loved ones, guys, that you see to suffer through this. My father was a great example of coronary artery disease with high, long-standing pre-diabetes. Never kind of didn't really cross the line, but man, huh, right? It's a tough <laughs> world. It is a tough world. It doesn't have to be this way. Right. So supplementation is certainly a part of that because it's a supplement to a healthy diet. You want right. the nutrients. You need the minerals. Your body absolutely requires these. That, this is a biochemical. All the reactions that happen in our body are due to uh, all these cofactors, your vitamins, your minerals, right. your trace which is, minerals. Which is why we pulled up. A, a lot of the stuff that we pulled out here. Right. The yeah. multivitamins, your magnesium, yep. your D. Yep. Ryan was just talking about that inflammation. The omega-3 fatty acids are great. Factor four. Yeah, for sure. The factor mm -hmm. four, the omega-3 fatty acids. You need phytonutrients. That's why we encourage eating the rainbow and different different colors and things like that. There's your super reds. There's your super greens. The, the power of phytonutrients is incredible. And you do get those out of meat, so don't be totally discouraged. But boom, antioxidants. So they can help neutralize some of these free radicals that are happening because they're just constantly under assault and, right. uh, and especially... high amounts of inflammation. Not, and oxidative stress is, is really the, the phrase, the term that goes with that. Right. Um, and especially if you might be eating like less fruits because we just talked about avoiding the sugar, avoiding the yeah. carbohydrates, you yeah. know, it, it, all of our products are, um, approved for, you know, diabetics. They're all no sh sugar free. Um, we tend to use stevia and monk fruit. Um, oh yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. Good point. Uh, we threw Good the point. gut health in there because gut health probiotics are, are in enzymes. They're very important about helpful breaking things down. Gut health is, you know, the gut is our second brain. It's involved in more than we think of. So it's always important to be addressing your gut health. Essential aminos. The, 
pull this out because obviously I talked about the more muscle you have, exactly. the more your body's yep. able to utilize yep. blood sugar. Yep. And amino, there's nothing better than essential aminos and helping us preserve that lean muscle mass. In between periods of meals, right? Like great sure. tool for that. You can use it along any time of day really, but man, she's right. Like that's the key. Essential aminos for giving your body the fuel so it doesn't start breaking down the muscle. Right. Building lean muscle is so critical, guys. We really should have creatine out here, you know, because it's just part of the whole thing. You right. should have the sure. collagen peptides. You sure. should have the, the whey protein. You yeah. should have the plant protein. Uh, that's what's the craziest thing, guys. We're talking about like live good because the way we are anyways, we're formulating for foundational health. Right. And you yeah, know? with the protein, I mean, it's hard to get enough protein in. That's where protein powders come in, into play. Like if you're one sitting there and saying like, I weigh 160 pounds and I'm eating my 160 grams of protein through other sources, meat, whatnot, eggs, dairy, kudos to you. Um, I know personally, it's hard for me to reach my, my, my goal. I typically eat about 150 grams of protein a day and it's hard to get there with just, you know, whole foods alone. So I rely on that, our protein powders. Um, so they're great help. Uh, 100 calories for 20 grams of protein. Really, really easy to add it in there yeah. as a snack yeah. with your meal. Make yeah. it a meal by increasing it all. So, and then lean. Lean is our body composition enhancement formula. Um, well, I want to talk about a couple of specifics of like what it's designed to do. Uh, Ryan might want to touch on a yeah, little sure. more, but it's funny. I was actually in the gym this morning, and um, one of the one of the people I was working out with came up to me and said, I just ordered lean. And she was asking me, she's like, I hate taking some, I oh, not a hate. I forget to take things and lean's going to be very hard for me because you're supposed to take it two before, before each meal. Yep. She's like, can I just take six in the morning? I'm like, eh. no, you can't. <laughs> um, you know, it's designed to take before meals. So we have it as two capsules prior to each of your three main meals. And the, the glucomannan in, uh, in lean is the fiber that expands the, yeah. 100, weight, 100 times its weight Expands in water. the size of your stomach. So when you're eating, so if you take this 30, it says 30 minutes on here, but the reason I say 30 to 60, I can even say 30 to 90 because our, you know, our systems are different. Some are, some digest a little bit slower. So you might need to take it six, 90 to 60 minutes. Um, so you take it drinking with a lot of water, always have to drink a lot of water and it expands. So then when you go to eat your meal, you're not able to eat as much, right? You just feel full. Naturally, you just feel full faster. And then also the berberine and the hops extract, they help to balance and stabilize our blood sugar when we eat. So this is not to say, oh, I'm going to take this and go eat my high carbohydrate, high sugar, whatnot. No, this is, this is again, anytime we eat food, our blood sugar goes up and down. And again, if you're insulin resistance, high blood sugar, high, you know, pre-diabetic, diabetic, whatever it is, you're not, you're, you're, you're the insulin is not taking away that blood sugar. So you really need to make sure you're focusing on it. Okay. So yeah. The, um, what else is it? You, you made a lot of good points about the product that, that's great. And, and, and something I was thinking of, but I, I want to just, let me throw this comment up here because, okay. um, the vegans I follow wholeheartedly believe in fruit is life. So do we, so do we. Oh, sure. When your body's compromised though, and you can't fruit. manage your sugar properly, you need to make very wise sugar decisions and the fruit you, you have to select the proper fruit. Everything fruits. that you put it, into That's all. Yep. I completely agree. Fruit is amazing. Fruit it yeah. is the so, vitamins, the nutrients, the, the the hydration. I mean, fruit is. Uh, are legumes important. okay? You name some some. Yeah, legumes black that are... beans uh, is is really great in um, soluble fiber. So a lot of all beans are. Look high at in fiber. this. Uh, so not a good. So grapes. grapes and melons extremely high in sugar uh, should be eaten alone. Ferments really fast and causes ga gases and bloat. Okay. Okay. Yep. So as you guys can see, there's a ton of information and advice out there. You really have to work with what serves you best, but there's some principles and some guidelines that you should, right. general guidelines that you should follow. So right. I healthy wanna, fats, high sure. in protein. I want to go on the sugar comment, yeah, go ahead. the fruit comment real quick, yeah, especially the go, grapes. Go. I just want to give an example. So my mom, my mom is extremely lean. She works out all the time and she's 72 years old. She is strong as a little whip. Um, she maybe like, she's, maybe like 95 pounds. I mean, super, super, super lean, um, much shorter than me. So, you know, her weight is much less, but her A1C was kind of on the higher level. My mom eats very, very, very clean, like really no real sugar or anything like that. Doesn't really eat carbohydrates, can't do gluten. So just avoids it all. She snacks on grapes oh, there it is. all Boom. throughout the day. Yeah. Just like not like piles of grapes, but like if you're kind of thirsty, hungry, just kind of yeah, go pop, pop, pop some grapes. And her doctor was like, 
Uh -oh. you got to back off the grapes. Like, Check. I don't know what else it would be, but your A1C has gone up and, you know, grapes are sh super high. This one says, look good products help. That's awesome. Don't eat too early, three to four hours, and try not to eat four hours before bed. Feel much better. If you can go four hours mm -hmm. before bed, that's impressive. I wish. But if you can go at least two <laughs> hours before could. bed, I'm telling you, you're right. This is a game changer, guys. Do not eat close to bedtime. Massive change in your sleep quality and your blood sugar management. And make sure you move after that meal. Please walk. I had a friend. I thought he was totally mm -hmm. active all the time. He says, man, I just started walking after uh, here. You told me that, like, we should walk after feel, meals. I won't stop doing it. And I feel amazing. Yes. Such a game, game changer after a meal. And I will say when I first met him, I don't know if you know, if we met in college. Yeah. But Ryan used to eat a big meal. And the first thing he would do was go lie down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, um, she I helped to me with a lot of things. Here. Albert, congratulations. That's awesome news. Nice. Just good news. Always yeah, no, good news. I love hearing I that, know, man. yes. For sure, for sure. Well, guys, look, we did a um, thing about, what did we do, Cal caloric restriction and weight loss. We're, we're not getting into that today because we're not talking to you today specifically about weight loss, but you can check that out. But, you, but We've done one on inflammation. hand in hand. We've done one on inflammation. <laughs> right. Inflammaging. Um, what else have we talked about that's relevant to today as well? The metabolism. Metabolic health. Metabolic we health. We did metabolic health. I mean, there's so much content around this, guys. And I think it's an awareness thing. It's an education. And I honestly think that you people out there that also they are currently suffering with high sugar know what you need to do. So right. sometimes it's just that extra push, right? And maybe that, that little, push is today. Today's yeah. the day. Start yeah, now. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> don't, let, don't let the cascade Did, did we cover events. everything you had? I think so, yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah. Well, so, I'm going to run through some quick comments. Yeah, maybe and I did and say, just... guys, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss anything. And uh, we love your comments your views. It helps us. We help you. It's kind of hand in hand. Like, comment. We always answer. Love to. Yes, please do that. Please do that. Albert's back and says, Ex exercise that gives me back pain. Can you, well, your back pain is going to get worse if you don't move. It's it just, that's the nature of the beast. You're going to have to find movements that work for you. Uh, seek out a healthcare provider, if right. whether it's chiropractic medicine or an orthopedic. A find somebody that can give you tailored advice. Right. Core strengthening exercises. Core. I mean, if Boom. you're doing exercises that tend to hurt your back, that, then you're doing the wrong exercises for your body. Oh, man, you guys are so complimentary. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We love you guys, too. Yeah, and check out all of our products are on our website, livegood.com. You can check them out there. We do have learn more sections uh, with some information. We're working on getting short little videos onto each product so you can quickly watch and get a quick educational one to three minutes. 100% move daily. Yeah. Any other questions, you guys, you know, I'm always available. Email. Some of these, you, you know, I see if they're not really hand in hand with what's going on today. It's fun to see, though. A lot of people are re recommending keto. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you're, it's not for everybody, but if you are struggling with blood sugar issues, guys, it is, it is the way to go. It really is. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean you have to be doing keto for life, but you've got to get what's going on in check and then figure out. It's all about learning, learning how your body, every, everybody's different. So <laughs> That's so funny. There's two comments about uh, trampoline, and I couldn't agree more. Absolutely love the rebounding. Like if you bought one little oh, trampoline sure. and you just wanted to jump for a little bit. Right. If, that, that's a great idea. You have like, one of the teeny little trampolines you next to your desk. Rebounder go jump for two minutes. And just jump for two minutes. Wow. I love that. Freaking now I great. feel like you need a little trampoline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should have one anyways. I love the whole, yeah. you know. You can do it after cold plunge. If you guys cold plunge, you know you can go out and jump and make your. Yes, we tend to go out on our kids' big trampoline, but we yeah. should have a little one. Rebounders can be great. Another comment. This is great. So you guys must be seeing all your other comments and commenting back and forth, and I like that too. Thank you for yes. for interacting the way you all do. Is dancing, dancing okay? Come extra, on, dancing Rosemary. is exercise. Boom. Yes. Who doesn't want to dance? Yes, you have come to on. just find it's movement. That's why sometimes I hate saying exercise. <laughs> I actually have it on my notes. Exercise slash oh. movement. It's just movement. What movement motivates you? If if you are going out and hating your exercise every single day, the likeliness of you sticking with it is look at this up. one here. This one asked about hey, Lisa Dad Ryan, recommendations of organic products for eyesight. So you're right to be concerned if your sugars are high, like I said earlier. Yes. Um, it can damage parts of your eye because the microvascular, uh, the inflammation and um, retinitis and different things can happen in the eye. Of course, lowering the sugar is your priority, right? Let's get back to that normal, healthy sugar levels. Um, but from there, you need nutrients. We need nutrients for the eyes. We need the lutein and zeaxanthin, right. which are in the, 
the multivitamin for men and women. We put eye support, vision support in both of those because of our a lot of it to do with the exposure to our blue light and the fact that those two carotenoids are really highly uh, concentrated in the back of our eye and the retina. So, right. So many things that you need to do for your eyes, guys, to protect your eyes. But natural light's also very important. So get outside. Um, can I take? Should I take super reds when my sugar is high? There are no sugars in in super reds. Um, so yeah, super reds a great addition. Yeah, the artificial sweetener thing is a high topic debate, hot topic debate here. It can There's cause some, an insulin surge. Yeah, yeah I mean, so you got to be careful with them for sure. It's a lot of conflicting literature out there, so really difficult to know what's right. Time for your methylene blue <laughs> tomorrow morning. I had mine today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we're, we should probably do. Um, I, I know next week, if you guys join us, that's the first, it's the first Monday, right? The first Monday of every, wait, the first Monday, the oh, today's the last. Did we mess up? Did we? Sure did. We'll, we'll do it next week. That's something. <laughs> Typically the last Monday of every month, we do do a live Q&A, call it our AUA, ask us anything. We goofed. Sorry, um, guys. Brought this topic in, but we'll do it. We'll, Nobody we'll, called us we'll out We'll flip-flop it. it. We'll yeah. do it um, next week. But I do also want to touch on coming after that. I want to do another a big one on methylene blue. This is a big one. The topic has been like the research has been pumping out more stuff. And Donica, you're all over the comments. I love it, especially women go through menopause. Or menopause strength training helps keep your bone density, bone mineral density strong, and prevents sarcopenia. Man, 100%. I'm telling you. And then what the problem too with the prediabetes and obesity is, man, your hormones absolutely get completely dysregulated. Yeah. And of course, we're all worried about our sex hormones, but there's so many hormones. We did the hormones up. Uh, uh, video too, but man, it's most your sex hormones are your, what you're going to really notice the most. Your progesterone gets screwed, your estrogen, your testosterone, which of course men and women all have those hormones. Right. So a lot of times Oof, I go, if I get the rough. question, like I'm having trouble getting pregnant, what should I take? I need, I, this is, again, I take steps back. Is there obesity involved, type two diabetes? I mean, there's so many of these things that need to, that we need to focus on because if you can fix those and get your hormones back in check, things happen naturally. Yeah. All right. We're at 42 minutes, honey. All right, guys. Have a great great rest <laughs> of your day. If you're not watching us live, thank you for tuning in, watching this recorded version. Yes. And we'll see you again next week. Yes. Any other questions that did not get answered? I guess I'm always available via email. And make sure you tune in next week. Again, it's our live AUA. So that's where we take questions. Well, it's ask us anything. We'll take questions all over the grid about health and wellness. So it doesn't come in with anything. That's right. All right, guys. Thanks take for care, joining. Take care, y'all. Bye, Bye now.